major bombshell dropped about the border, something that we haven't really talked about much. Yes, we discussed the border. Yes, we discussed how crazy the policies are of the Biden administration. But let's dive a little deeper. What are some of the things that just come out that proves the point that I don't know if the Biden and Harris administration is looking out for your best interest. We know that. We've heard the replacement theories. Now let's dive a little deeper. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but let us know what you think about this content. Your thumbs up does help us stay in the algorithm and it does mean the world to me when you share our content and comment and tell us what your thoughts are. Together we can gain wisdom, common sense, and hopefully have a better approach as we kind of navigate ourselves through this crazy world that we live in. Now, let's talk about some crazy news that came out just this week. Now, also there's some good news when it comes to Trump supporters. So uh, let's dive a little deeper in all these conversations because they are very, very important and very pertinent to what is going on for the next coming days and weeks ahead as we get ready for an election in November. Now, two reports when it comes to the border that's been happening secretly that you may have not been aware of. Now, it may have come out and you may now say, okay, I've heard that. The question is, why are they hiding it from us? Now, the first one is, uh, this is insane. The Biden administration has admitted to transporting over 300,000, actually 320,000 migrants secretly into the United States. Now, here's the thing. You're like, Kobe, he's put millions across the border. No, here's the thing. He's actually taking these hundred of thousands of people and he's secretly done it not through border but through other means meaning he has brought in extra people into the, the the america into different areas in a purpose now the question is what's the purpose that's where you have to do your research i think there's a lot more to it but why all of a sudden there's a vulnerability there's a national threat issue there's a problem at the border but then there's hundreds of thousands of more people that are secretly coming in that the Biden administration is bringing by their choosing, by their hand-picked selections. Now, help me understand that. So they're flying them in all across America. Now, actually, there's been some whistleblowers and some insiders, part of his own administration, saying this could cause some vulnerabilities. Well, you think? <laughs> I mean, it will definitely cause some vulnerabilities. So. There's, there was 9-11 that took place that so-called had 20 people or 30 people, you know, did the attack. We just flew in over 300,000 people that could be very, very unstable, very, very hand-selected into our cities. And we don't think that we're having a national security threat. Not only that, there's, that's not counting the 20 to 50,000 Chinese nationalists that has come across our border. What are they actually doing? I want you to listen to this too. It also came out that the Supreme Court temporarily bars Texas from arresting illegals. They cannot send them back. Now, we're not going to talk about the stories of all the heinous crimes that migrants have done. But now you're seeing again the Democrats utilizing the court systems to basically bar Texas from maneuvering people back across the border. Now the question is, is Texas going to stand up? Is this going to put another battle of intensity? Now, I hate to say it, the sad thing is these politicians look for ways to win. So it's election year, so I'm hoping that Texas will do it. Sadly, they should have been doing this for the last few years. So should Arizona, so should New Mexico, so should California. And sadly, so should our government. It should not be a discussion that we are arguing over people coming across our border. And our Supreme Court that is supposedly conservative is not helping it. So secretly, we've been flying people in the country. Secretly, we're, our Supreme Court is telling Texas not to deport people, not to arrest these illegal immigrants. And here, here's another thing. Did you know that they, they have literally captured several rapists, people who have been caught in these sanctuary cities, in these sanctuary states, and instead of deporting them. You know, I heard your, your uh, DHS leader, Mallorca, say would deport these bad players. You know, not everybody's bad, but these bad ones we would deport. 
Actually, uh, New York Mayor said the same thing. Well, if they're not violent, we would leave them here, which is a crock. It's unbelievable. And you should be very upset if you live in those areas. But now you're seeing that they are leaving convicted rapists, convicted murderers. They're, they're leaving them here in America. They released them, catch or release, back in America for a quote-unquote court date. Now, now, I want you to listen to that. So we have flown in 320,000 people secretly. We have allowed 20 to 50,000 Chinese nationals to cross our border. We've allowed, we've seen terrorists come across the Azerbaijan uh, terrorist guy. We talked about that in another video. Now we're seeing convicted murderers and rapists on our grounds released. You know Venezuela's numbers are down because they said all of them are coming up here now. Their theft and uh, murder and crime rates are down. You know why? Because their people, their prison people that they let out, they gave them a free pass to come up here. And your administration is letting them in. You think the Atlanta, Georgia situation where the girl died, Lakin died, that's going to happen more and more and more because we are allowing it to take place. And your conservative politicians are being just as agreeable to it because they're not doing anything about it. They're not bringing attention to it. What, the three or four people yelling about it? While all the while we're letting them in, your McConnells, all that, they're worried about Ukraine and not your border. And we are allowing these people to cross. And your government just flew in 320,000 people. So if the Congress is over the purse, if the Congress is the one that, that pays the bills and allocates the money, how did they not know about this 320,000 people coming here via plane to our cities that now puts us in a very national security vulnerable state? If, if they know how to spend money and they know where the money is being spent, how come they didn't know the Biden administration was doing that? Is our conservative leaders actually being conservative enough to actually see the truth? Or are they still worried about a laptop, worried about Ukraine? The sponsor of today's video is Lumino. Lumino was developed back in 2014 by one of America's top dentists. He was so dissatisfied with everything on the market from buying over the counter to even the prescription stuff. So therefore, the birth of Lumino. My favorite thing about Lumino and its products is it's non-toxic, it's natural, it's free of preservatives, and safe for your microbiome. I absolutely love their mouthwash and their toothpaste. Now, the one new thing that they came out with is this electric toothbrush. All the replacement heads are made with renewable materials. There's five cleaning modes, and the cool thing about Lumino, you can buy this in kits where you can get the mouthwash, the toothpaste, and also the whitening strips. It is a game changer for your smile. The benefit of this is it gives you deep cleaning for your teeth. Remember, our teeth, our smile, our oral care is so important, especially when we talk about taking care of ourselves without all the harmful things and other products. As people who want to live sustainable, sometimes we forget about the easy things. We think of food, we think of water. But what about our skin and taking care of our body? What about our mouth taking care of our mouth? Dental care is so important. Think about having a cavity and not being able to get taken care of. When you take care of your mouth, and you make sure you're doing it with great products. Not only do you hopefully have a pretty smile, but it is oral care to the utmost importance. My kids, my wife, we all love Lumino products and it allows us to know that not only are we treating our family with the best of foods, the best quality goods, and now we can add oral care to that as well. Dr. Mahdi, the creator of Lumino, not only made it for his patients, not only for his clinic, but for his family. So if it's safe for his family, I believe in the product and I think that you will too. And once you try this out, not only trying out the electric toothbrush, but the products they sell, you will love their product. Check out Illumino today. Use my link below, it is in the description and you will get $10 off. Check it out, you will not be disappointed in this product. Not only for healthier oral care, but to know you're helping a small business that supports this channel. So check out Illumino products below. Grab one of these electric toothbrushes. It comes in several colors. I'm a little partial to blue, as you see. I love blue. Thank you, Lumino, for supporting and sponsoring this video. One more story that should just upset you. People are living paycheck to paycheck. People are struggling financially, and people can't even afford their own groceries. Won't you listen to this? There's a new report, and it came off Breitbart. You can go and read it. It says, more than 8 million illegal aliens will live free, free of charge, in the U.S. while awaiting maybe deportation by the end of 2024. 
So not only are we taking care of the ones that we're calling refugees, the ones that we're allowing to stay here, now there's a report showing that the 8 million people that are considered confirmed deportations by the end of 2024, which means there's an election between that. So let's just see. If Trump wins, that would happen probably. If Biden wins, those people will never be deported. But 8 million people will live free of charge on your tax dollars based on that new report to show that, yeah, they're signed up for deportation. But I want to ask you a question. You live one week in America. You pay your taxes. You uh, contribute to society by working, making goods, uh, you know, working at your job, if it be blue collar, white collar. Have you ever lived one free day in your life? Have you ever just got free food? Just one free meal. Two free meals, three free meals a day, a free bed to sleep in at night. No. While you're working, you're paying taxes. While you're working, your energy, your food bill, your car, your auto insurance, it's all collecting. Because you have to pay something per day, basically, to have it. Because monthly bills come in. So if you average that out per day, I imagine you're paying $100, $200 a day just to live in America. That's not counting the expense that you've caused. I'm talking about just to have a home, or just to have a car, or just to have insurance, or just to have food. It's costing you more than sometimes you're making in a day's time. However, we're paying for 8 million people that is documented that we are allowing to live here free of charge. Our tax dollars at work. So when conservatives say they're going to fix everything, I struggle. I don't believe it. I don't trust it. So what I do is, is I come back to this, and here's the things that I want you to always think of. People dog me out for saying self-sufficiency and sustainability, but to be honest with you, you are your only hope when it comes to the physical realm here in America. Now spiritually, again, as a Christian, I believe that God is always gonna take care of us. I believe that if we put our faith in Him, no matter what we go through, there's a new life that we're living for. I mean, we are Christians, but when it comes to here now, the politicians are not going to help you. Your local government, your state government, all that's not going to help you. Why do you think we raise our children at home? Why do you think we raise our food at home? Why do you think we homeschool our kids? Why do you think that I've tried to work for myself? Not because I just want to be completely independent. It's because I've realized that I have to be independent. I have to make sure my kids have a better life and a more educated situation to understand what real history is and not just indoctrination through schools. I don't want to just work for someone and all of a sudden be at their beck and call to know that if something happens to my job because they're having to pay extra taxes or having to cover inflation or having to cover interest, that I could lose that job. So I've learned to try to be more independent, not because I just wanted to. It's because I had to. You know, I get up every morning, I milk two cows at 4 a.m. and I feed all these animals on this farm. It was flooding this morning. I'm tired. I didn't go to bed until about 1130. And I'm not saying, woe is me. I don't even want your pity. I'm just saying, I do that not because I just want to. Some days are fun. Some days are easy. I love messing with the dogs or messing with the pigs or something. But most of the time, it's because there's a call that we have to make. If I want my family safe and I want them to be sustainable, I want to take care of them and know that it's not just the government having to provide for them. Those hard, I have to make those hard decisions. I have to do more things to be more independent. So I challenge you, it's not about trying to do everything 100% all, all this year. Sell everything and own a farm and start milking cows and have pigs. Don't bite off more than you can chew. What I am saying though is if you can just do 1% better each and every day, if you can just rely on Christ spiritually, getting the word and try to gain wisdom first of all, then secondly you say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to eat out today. I'm going to try to save that 3 or 4 or 5 or 7 or $10 that I would typically put into town food, and I'm going to try to make a sandwich today. I'm going to try to not eat out as much this week. I'm going to try to save a little bit more. I'm going to try to get out of debt a little bit quicker. I'm going to try to do this, 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 this. You set up that plan because when we have a plan of independence and we can make those check marks off and we realize that we've been secretly putting people in our country, we've been secretly allowing things to happen, and then again, publicly, we're allowing more than millions to come across our border, and then we take care of them with our tax dollars that we're having to work so hard to pay for, then you realize that no one's there for you, so you have to do it for yourself. So instead of saying, you know what, I want another stimulus. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm gonna borrow more money. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm gonna allow someone else to do it for me, I challenge you to do it yourself because no one else is gonna do it for you.
So spiritually prepare, which is something that you can't do, Christ does through us. But then we have to physically, mentally, and emotionally prepare, and that takes you being independent, not because you want to, because you have to. Especially as a father, as a mother, as someone who has children, someone who has grandchildren, let's change our family trees a little bit, and let's try to build a legacy with our children that's gonna impact them and make them better humans. Because remember, when we create easy times, like we have in our nation, we create weakness, and weakness creates harder times, and now we're back at that hard time. The question is, are we gonna step up to the plate and do what we're supposed to do? Guys, let me know your thoughts. These secrets and these hidden agendas are now coming out in the open. The question is, what are we gonna do with it? And the question is, who's gonna be there to help us? I think it's gonna be our communities and the people who think like we do. So press on, God bless, happy homesteading.